A missing wallet resurfaces more than a half century later, and the man who found it has also found the rightful owner. Since the dawn of human civilization, scientists and archaeologists haven't ceased to uncover new discoveries about human history, but none is as astonishing as the archaeological sites in Antarctica. These sites are short of nothing extraordinary, with unbelievable discoveries that can rewrite human history. Come with me as I unravel 20 archaeological, almost unbelievable sites in Antarctica that have left scientists, researchers, and archaeologists gasping for breath. Okay, so uh, at one point, some people are like, what's going on with Antarctica? Have you heard of this, where they sent Admiral Byrd up? What's going on in Antarctica? Yeah. Number one, the mysterious blood falls. Among all the shocking sites in Antarctica, the first is the mysterious blood falls. You sure know waterfalls. And even if Antarctica has a special fall, it should be an ice fall. But here we are, beholding a blood fall. But is it really a blood fall? And what's the source of such a mysterious fall? Found in the McMurdo Valleys, the Bloodfall is a unique water spring distinguished by its red hue standing out against the white ice nearby. Scientists have been investigating this enigmatic phenomenon with limited success in trying to understand its origins. After much struggle, they came up with several hypotheses to explain this unusual phenomenon. They claim the source of this mysterious Bloodfall is a subglacial lake that has been isolated for two million years. You may be curious about how this lake became isolated. This isolation likely occurred due to the disappearance of humans from the area, leading to the development of a unique and mysterious ecosystem. Unlike typical lakes, this subglacial lake stands out because of its high salt content, surpassing even that of seawater. Surprisingly, this high salt concentration plays a crucial role in preventing the lake from freezing, even under the extreme cold conditions of Antarctica. As a result of that, the lake remains liquid and sheltered beneath the icy glacier. This saline state plays an important role in transforming the iron-rich water into a vivid crimson color. How exactly does this happen? Could the salt itself change into a red substance? Let's find out. When the subglacial water interacts with the iron-laden bedrock beneath the glacier, it triggers a chemical reaction in which the iron oxidizes, creating a rusty hue. As the high-pressure environment beneath the glacier forces this iron-rich water to pass through the ice, it emerges into the open air, and when it comes to contact with the frigid Antarctic atmosphere, the rapid oxidation results in the blood-red coloration, leaving behind an otherworldly scene. This theory is the most widely accepted for the origin of blood falls. But do you know there's more to the blood fall? One of the most intriguing aspects of the Bloodfall is the existence of an extremophile microbial ecosystem underneath the glacier. Researchers discovered that the salty and iron-rich water contains life despite the extreme conditions. Like other creatures in Antarctica, these creatures have adapted to the isolated environment. This offers compelling insights into the possibility of life in some of the harshest and most isolated places on Earth. The extremophiles in Bloodfall obtain their strength through the chemical reactions between iron and sulfur compounds in the salty water to produce energy. This again attests to the fact that life can do anything to survive in the most challenging and remote environment. So if we get to icy moons like Europa or Enceladus, we shouldn't be surprised if we find signs of life. What other perplexing site do we have in Antarctica? Number two, a massive ice fish colony. Fish naturally live in water, so placing them on ice typically results in their death. But scientists have discovered something unbelievable in Antarctica. In February 2021, they found this with assistance from the German polar research vessel Polarstern. Equipped with a car-sized camera system affixed to its stern, the vessel captures and transmits images to the deck as it tows. So while doing a routine seafloor analysis, they found the largest colony of fish nests, about 240 square kilometers. The nests are around 15 centimeters deep and 75 centimeters in diameter, and they have a central area filled with small stones. This stood against the muddy seabed. They found that each nest contains around 1,735 to 2,500 eggs, with an adult fish guiding them. It was an incredible sight. The colony is home to the remarkable icy fish with a see-through skull and transparent blood. They are vertebrates, but have no red blood cells. To survive the low temperature, 
the fish has evolved an antifreeze protein in its transparent blood that stops ice crystals from growing. Furthermore, although sea ice envelops the Weddell Sea throughout the year, it is relatively thin. This allows for photosynthesis to take place in the sea, supporting life to thrive. The seabed is also home to various creatures like sea sponges, corals, octopuses, and starfish. But then, the presence of seals threatens the lives of the icy fish. Around 2,000 seals live in the area and likely dive into the colony to feed on the ice fish. While some freshwater fish species make nests similar to the icy fish, researchers confess that they've never seen anything like that in the deep sea. Number three, the possibility of UFO graves in Antarctic snow. The appearance of aliens on Earth has become rampant, but are these claims true? Well, maybe or not. However, recently, the internet caught a glimpse of a crashed UFO buried beneath the snow in Antarctica. This UFO measured around 65 feet wide and 230 feet long. The absence of any track around it closes the possibility of it being humans, making it more believable that we are not alone on this side of the planet. Russian UFO enthusiast Valentine DCTV found this magical site and proclaimed it an unidentified flying object based on all standards. There are not enough claims to back up this conclusion because what appears as a strange advanced spacecraft from another planet might just be a common crack formed due to the differential movement of the ice. But that's not all to see in Antarctica. The next sites will leave you speechless. Number 4. The Discovery of a 1 Million Year Old DNA Scientists have recently unearthed DNA fragments dating back to 1 million years ago. This sort of disturbs the mind. How long has life been around on the Earth? Let's come back to the 1 million old DNA. Where was it found? Beneath the Scotia Sea. Researchers suggest that today DNA could potentially be found in terrestrial caves and subarctic permafrost because Sada DNA dating back to 400,000 and 650,000 years has been discovered in these areas. The Scotia Sea is identified as the most concentrated location for this ancient DNA due to its cold temperature, low oxygen levels, and absence of UV radiation, preserving the Sada DNA without degradation. Archaeologists say that recovered samples may be useful in understanding how climate change could affect Antarctica in the future. They are steadily removing these ancient DNA fragments from the ground to get an authentic look into the past. Scientists are not certain which species the DNA belongs to, but the closest answer is that it originated from a group of phytoplankton known as diatoms. The DNA dates back to an ancient period of global warming and could explain how Antarctica's marine ecosystems will respond to human-caused climate change. Number 5. An Enormous Underground River Scientists have found a huge river hidden under the ice sheets in Antarctica. How did they get to know about this? While studying the effects of climate change on glaciers, glaciologists came across a surprising discovery when their airborne radar survey revealed a hidden river flowing under the ice. The scientists analyzed a vast area encompassing ice sheets from both the eastern and western regions of Antarctica, showing water flowing toward the Weddell Sea. Not just a small, isolated river, but a vast one. According to experts, the river spans 460 kilometers under the ice, a distance longer than the famous River Thames, which flows through southern England and London. According to the researchers, the river can substantially affect how the glacial ice flows and melts. The river system lies beneath layers of ice, including the Institute Ice Stream, the Muller Ice Stream, the Support Force Glacier, and the Foundation Ice Stream, or Academy Glacier. Number six, discovery of a lost continent. There are only seven continents in the world, but Antarctica changed that by discovering a lost continent through the data of an unused satellite. How did this happen? In 2018, a group of researchers recovered a dormant gravity mapping satellite that had been inactive for five years. Despite its meticulous tracking of Earth's gravity field, the satellite was eventually decommissioned and dismantled. The unexpected discovery of valuable data within the satellite surprised everyone. Among the findings were images of gravity that revolutionized all that we thought of Antarctica. The continental remains beneath Antarctica's surface have been difficult to study due to the massive sheets of ice over them. However, this satellite enabled researchers to unearth something new. This was published in scientific reports and detailed the geological history of Antarctica over the past 200 million years. 
The video illustrated how Antarctica disconnected from what was once the landmass known as Gondwana, a subsection of the supercontinent Pangaea. About 180 million years ago, Gondwana began to break up into separate land masses. These places eventually became known as India, Australia, and Antarctica. The satellite also revealed exciting mosaic geological features that reveal fundamental similarities and differences between the crust beneath Antarctica and other continents, which it joined 160 million years ago. The research found cratons, pieces of ancient continental plates, a mile beneath Antarctica's icy surface, which also appeared in Australia and India. This proved that East Antarctica was once attached to the continent. However, due to its thin lithosphere, they could see no craton in West Antarctica. The lost continent beneath Antarctica's surface not only revealed a more detailed picture of the construction of ancient continents, but also provided insight into how Antarctica's geological composition affects its icy layers and how those layers will respond to impending climate change. Number 7. A wallet lost 53 years ago. Imagine you are 70 years old and lost a purse when you were 20. You may not even remember losing it. It's likely that someone found it and used the cash for themselves. Astonishing. A man faced almost the same predicament in Antarctica. More than five decades ago, Paul Grisham lost his purse. Now, 91 years old, he was delighted and at the same time, surprised when some workers called to inform him about his purse. They claimed that they had found the wallet in Antarctica. But how did it end there? In 1967, Grisham began a 13-month assignment as a meteorologist for the United States Navy in Antarctica. He was there as part of the Operation Deep Freeze. So, from 1967 to 1968, he served in Antarctica to provide logistical support to civilian scientists on the continent. The workers discovered Paul's wallet behind a locker during the demolition of a building on Ross Island in 2014. Paul's wallet contained items that summarized his life and times in the Army. There is his Navy ID card, driver's license, receipt for money orders sent to his wife, and more. Paul received his purse through the efforts of amateur detectives who embarked on weeks' journeys, exchanging emails and Facebook messages to track him down. Number 8. Antarctic Pyramids When you mention pyramids, one would think of Egypt. But here's something new. Many researchers claim that a pyramid hides in Antarctica. You will need to visit the Ellsworth Mountains to see this intriguing structure. Adventurers suggest it might be a mark of ancient civilizations or extraterrestrial activities. However, a more authentic claim is that the structure is a natural feature. The pyramid is, in reality, a naturally formed mountain because the Ellsworth Mountains are the highest mountain range in Antarctica, stretching over 400 kilometers. Geologists explained that the peak's pyramidal shape wasn't due to human activity, but through natural geological processes. Notwithstanding, Many still believe that the pyramid signifies an ancient settlement in the region. Well, could that be true? The only real proof of the pyramids is a series of photographs taken during the expedition. Some of the pictures show mountains with smooth edges, partially covered in snow. Others show a conical-shaped mound of snow near the coast. Then, there appears to be an icy pyramid on a frozen plain. Apparently, there's no uniformity in the pictures. From all indications, the giant pyramids are mountains. They also look like mountain ranges in extremely cold climates. Number 9. Shipwreck of Shackleton's Endurance In 1914, Sir Ernest Shackleton embarked on what he believed to be the last Antarctic challenge, a transitional journey from sea to sea crossing the pole. His dreams became a reality when he raised substantial money to purchase a big ship, the Endurance. Initially named Polaris, the Endurance was a sturdy 300T, perfect for the harsh conditions they would face. Shackleton and his team wanted to make a groundbreaking one, 800-mile journey across Antarctica. Unfortunately, Shackleton and his team faced many challenges from the beginning of the expedition. Just as the Endurance set sail toward the Antarctic, the ship became trapped in packed ice for months. Shackleton and his crew became stranded on the ice. They had to battle extreme cold, dwindling supplies and the constant threat of ice crushing their ship. As time passed, the ice they camped on split, and they had to use the lifeboats. It was at this point that they lost the ship. After an arduous journey, they landed on Elephant Island. 
their first contact with solid ground for over a year, but the ship lay deep in the icy waters until 106 years later, when a team of adventurers, marine archaeologists, and technicians used undersea drones to locate the wreck at the bottom of the Weddell Sea, east of the Antarctic Peninsula. The team spent more than two weeks around where the ship went down in 1915. Even though it has been sitting in 10,000 feet of water for over a century, it looked just like it did on the day it went down. The timbers, although disrupted, are still together, and the name Endurance is still visible on the stern. Marine archaeologist Menson Bound said this was the finest wooden shipwreck ever seen. The mission leader who unearthed the ship described the moment the camera landed on the ship's name as jaw-dropping. The recovery team battled sea ice, predators, and unstable temperatures. It was really achieving the impossible. Number 10. A bizarre oval shape in the ice. In 2012, a satellite hovering over Antarctica snapped a bizarre oval-shaped image in the ice. This image measured around 409 feet wide. Curious to know what it was, scientists analyzed it and announced that it was artificial. How could that be? The rings of the structure looked like the walls of a compound or something carefully designed, but confusion set in because the region is one of the most untouched places in the world, the vast frozen deserts of East Antarctica. This is the coldest, driest, and windiest place on Earth, several miles from civilization. This disregarded the assumption that a human had probably built a compound now covered with ice. Scientists then tried explaining that it's a bizarre ice formation caused by an Antarctic wind named catabatic winds. These winds, which occur at night, blow over mountain plateaus and glaciers. The plateau releases heat, cooling the air and creating a dry mass of air. As a result, the wind can create dune-like features known as satugi that appear on snow. What remains puzzling is the formation of sharp, wave-like ridges in the snow surface, running parallel to the wind's direction. While these structures typically take varied shapes, it is uncommon for them to form an oval, such as the one captured by a satellite. Number 11. Mysterious Mountains in Antarctica Deep mysteries truly lurk beneath Antarctica. One of them is the Gamburtsev Mountains. You may know a lot about mountains, but this is completely different. The mountains are roughly the size of the European Alps. And guess what? These mountains are nobody's mate. They are more than 100 million years old. And where can you find them? Deep in the ice. One would think they should have eroded under the grinding ice, but no, these mountains are as rugged as the Rocky Mountains. What gives this mountain so much strength? Timothy Kreitz, a glaciologist at Columbia University, said that erosion stopped for the Gamburtsevs and most of East Antarctica once the ice sheet started getting large enough. But here is the real deal. No one has ever seen these mountains. Their steep ridges and valleys are entirely concealed by ice. Situated close to the 70-degree east longitude line below Dome A, one of Earth's harshest places, these mountains remain unseen. Speculation exists that if the ice covering Antarctica were to melt, the peak of the Gambertsevs could emerge as one of the tallest mountain ranges on the continent. Currently standing at over 8,850 feet above sea level without the ice sheet, this mountain could reach an elevation of 10,800 feet. You must be wondering how the scientists managed to get this measurement. To see through the ice, they flew an ice-penetrating radar instrument across the Gambertsevs Mountains over a four-week period in December 2008 and 2009. The research also revealed a network of subglacial streams and lakes flowing through deep, long mountain valleys, which saved the mountains from erosion. Number 12. The Phytoplankton Another mesmerizing site in Antarctica is a hidden secret thriving beneath the icy waters of the continent. Can you believe some tiny creatures reside under Antarctica's ice? Even scientists marvel at this discovery. This whole world of microscopic life was quietly going about its business, unnoticed by many curious eyes. This discovery baffled scientists because they believed the thick ice cover on Antarctic waters made it impossible for phytoplankton to survive. They thought the limited sunlight penetration would hinder their growth. But they were wrong. These fascinating creatures survived thanks to underwater instruments and NASA's IAT-2 satellite. We wouldn't have discerned this without them. 
We now know that the Antarctic Sea is not the impenetrable fortress we once thought it was. In fact, its fractures and openings allow enough sunlight to slip through. Surprisingly, that's what the phytoplankton needed to survive. They are fascinating microscopic plant-like organisms that play a crucial role in the ocean ecosystem. They perform photosynthesis just like plants on land. They absorb sunlight and nutrients to create energy. They are like the grasses of the ocean, sustaining a whole web of life. If these creatures can survive, then others may too. But that's not all there is to see in this continent. What other intriguing discoveries did researchers uncover in Antarctica? Number 13, the world's largest iceberg moving to its doom. A new satellite revealed that the world's largest iceberg, A76A, has entered the Drake Passage. This isn't just water, it's a waterway that contains a fast-moving ocean current that will melt the mighty berg. It has been floating around Antarctica for years without melting, but now the satellite indicates the iceberg is gravitating towards its doom. The berg is around 84 miles long and 16 miles wide. It's a fragment of the world's largest iceberg, the Rhode Island size A76, which broke off from the western side of Antarctica's Rhone Ice Shelf. This later fractured into three chunks, A76A, A76B, and A76C. The satellite revealed that the iceberg sits between Elephant Island and South Orkney Islands at the southern end of the passage. Its direction shows that it will soon head further north into the waterway. According to the Earth Observatory, when the iceberg moves in this direction, strong ocean currents drag it eastward and then northward into warmer waters where it completely melts. Number 14, the Factorian Deep. Researchers in Antarctica kept a close eye on the sea and have now discovered the new deepest point of the ocean. This is what they call the Factorian Deep, which sits nearly 24,000 feet below the sea surface. 24,000 feet doesn't look like a big deal, right? Imagine 17 state buildings stacked from top to bottom. That's how deep the point is. American explorer and entrepreneur Victor Vescovo discovered this area during his five deep expeditions. He set out to map the deepest point of the world's five oceans. Vescovo piloted a submersible named Limiting Factor to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean's South Sandwich Trench. This undersea canyon spans roughly 600 miles of seafloor between South America and Antarctica. Vesco's expeditions mapped the entire length of the South Sandwich Trench for the first time, uncovering the Southern Ocean's new deepest point. And then, they documented the Factorian Deep on a seafloor map for the first time. Number 15. Whales. Anywhere in the world, whales are the cynosure of all eyes. But if you haven't seen the whales in Antarctica, you haven't met the rare species of whales. Many people travel down to Antarctica to see rare species of these mammals. First among them is the blue whales. These whales are so large that even the largest animals, like dinosaurs, looked like dwarfs before them. Their circulatory system pumps 10 tons of blood through their body using the heart size of a small car. Read that again. The whale's main blood vessel, called the aorta, is so wide that a child could conveniently crawl through it. And you know what? A blue whale calf can drink 50 gallons of its mother's milk and gain 200 pounds daily. The largest of its kind weighs around 150, 200 tons. Blue whales range from gray-blue to dark gray at the surface, but underwater, they gush out a luminous aqua blue. Next are killer whales. These are also big animals. While adult males weigh up to 11.1 tons, females weigh 8.3 tons. Killer whales are also known as orcas one of the most well-known types. And that's because they are trapped in marine aquariums where they can perform diverse tricks. But be careful around them. These whales from Antarctica are toothed and carnivores. They frequently hunt in packs and pods, earning them the name sea wolves. They have long bodies with upturned snouts, which make them look like they are smiling. They eat tiny shrimp-like creatures called krill. And for your information, they swallow their prey whole. Then, you have the fin whales, the largest after the blue whales. Weighing up to 50 tons, they swim faster than all other large whales. You have the Antarctic minke whale, one of the smallest baleen whales. Other little whales are the humpback whales and the say whale. Number 16, vanishing ice. 
We've talked about the iceberg gradually moving towards its doom. But there's still a more disturbing sight in Antarctica, and that's Antarctica's sea ice, shrinking faster than expected over recent decades. In the past, researchers thought it was growing or stable, but new discoveries show that it's decreasing at an alarming rate. What is the cause of this situation? Some speculated that it might be due to changes in ocean currents or temperatures causing the ice to melt. The ozone hole over Antarctica may affect how much solar radiation reaches the Earth's surface. Melting land ice could contribute to rising sea levels, decreasing the amount of salty water under Antarctic ice shelves and causing them to melt faster. However, we ought to pay much attention to the vanishing ice because it's of utmost importance to Antarctica and the world. While it doesn't directly affect sea level rise as it's already floating in the ocean, it does have indirect effects. Its disappearance leaves coastal ice sheets and glaciers exposed to waves and warm ocean waters. This makes them more vulnerable to melting and breaking off. A lack of sea ice could also significantly impact sea wildlife, including krill, on which many of the region's whales feed, and penguins and seals, which rely on sea ice for feeding and resting. More broadly, Antarctica's sea ice regulates the planet's temperature. This means that its disappearance could have devastating effects far beyond the continent. Sea ice also reflects incoming solar energy into space. When it melts, it exposes the darker ocean waters beneath, which absorb the sun's energy. That doesn't like something to rejoice about. Number 17, Mount Erebus. With the ice in Antarctica, the last thing you can expect to see is a volcano. Therefore, hold your heart as I introduce Mount Erebus, the active volcano in Antarctica. There are four volcanoes on Ross Island, but none of them are inactive except Mount Erebus. James Clark Ross discovered Mount Erebus in 1841. It is the southernmost active volcano in Antarctica and one of the most active volcanoes in the world, with more than 100 eruptions in the past two decades. This volcano's astonishing feature is its ice shelves and glaciers, part of Ross Island's South Magnetic Pole. Mount Erebus is constantly erupting. The last eruption was in 2020, and according to scientists, expect more. Many know Mount Erebus for its active anorthoclase feldspar phonolite lava lake, which has been continuously active since at least 1972. The volcano's lava lake has the link to a long-lived open and stable magma plumbing system that might have been in place for the past 17,000 years. The current activity at the lava lake includes spattering and sometimes explosions that can eject bombs outside the crater. Number 18, Antarctic fungi. While one won't expect much life to thrive in Antarctica, here are some fungi surviving through the ice. These fungi vary according to their species, but they all have one thing in common. They have adapted their metabolism to work at temperatures below zero degrees. This allows them to survive the harsh conditions where there are no other animals or plants for them to eat. Funny enough, these creatures not only survive, they also grow faster at lower temperatures than at higher temperatures. They don't require much water. Some can even grow on dry grounds. And when it's freezing, they will not die. Due to lack of moisture, they surprisingly slow their movements until they spring again. Scientists even saw fungi gorging on the petroleum leaking from their fuel containers. They are researching to know if the creatures clean up larger oil spills worldwide. Number 19, singing ice. This may sound unbelievable, but yeah, ice in Antarctica sings. How is that possible? The singing ice is a phenomenon that occurs when wax-coated ice crystals vibrate in the cold air. It happens through the same process that causes a piano to produce music when you press its keys. When exposed to cold temperatures, the ice crystals are made of small spheres packed together. These surfaces begin to vibrate, creating a thin sounding tone that can be heard as far as 600 meters away. The sound of the singing ice has been noted in Antarctica since 2010, but it's only become widely known recently. A 2016 study shows that singing ice could be heard up to two miles away from its source. Scientists are studying the singing ice in Antarctica to observe its evolution over time and in different locations. Their aim is to further understand the reasons behind it and its impact on Earth. Number 20, the lost city of Atlantis in Antarctica. 
Compiling a list of disturbing discoveries in Antarctica would be incomplete without detailing the Atlantis story. Atlantis is a legendary city that is believed to have sunk beneath the waves. Archaeologists have been looking for the sunken city for centuries without success. However, there is clear evidence that the city existed but was lost to the ocean floor long ago. Scientists discovered that humans built the city on top of an ancient seabed. Some evidence confirming this includes a tunnel and chambers dug out of the ice, as well as artifacts left behind by ancient civilizations. Plato described the city in his book Timius and Critias, in which he said that the city was a great kingdom that flourished before other civilizations. The city lies on the southern tip of Africa on the Atlantic Peninsula. It had a large harbor where ships could dock and unload their cargo before sailing to other parts of the world. According to Plato, gold and silver were used to build the city building. Antarctica remains one of Earth's most isolated places, cloaked in mystery and home to unbelievable discoveries. Thanks for watching another episode of Beyond Discovery. While you're still here, check out the other videos you see on your screen.